Hey, Firebase developers. So how do you make sure that your users can read and write only the data in your project that they're allowed? I'm sure you probably already know that you can do this with Firebase security rules. You can write security rules to protect the data stored in real-time database, cloud Firestore, and cloud storage. These rules sit between your client app and the data, making sure that each of the reads and writes performed by the client SDK are allowed for the end user. If your client app directly reads and writes data using any of these three products, you definitely need to think about security. I imagine that many of you are watching today because you got an email notification saying that your rules aren't secure. Hopefully, by the end of this series, you'll be able to write rules that are good for your app. Firebase Security Rules provides an expression language that lets you choose how the end user is allowed to access data in these products. Note that the expression language is not a full programming language, and there are two varieties. They both might feel similar to JavaScript. For real-time database, the rules are formatted using JSON. You can see here that you identify a node in the database, such as users, with possible wildcards to match any child node. Then apply conditions on that to indicate how the data at that node may be read and written. In this case, we're saying that anyone can read any child node under users, but only an authenticated user may write the child node with the same ID as their own UID assigned by Firebase authentication. For Cloud Firestore and Cloud Storage, the syntax is quite different. You have a service declaration to identify which product is being used. This is for Cloud Firestore. One or more match patterns that specify the path, and also possible wildcards of documents or objects to protect. Nested inside match patterns, there are allow expressions that determine the specific conditions for accessing the document or object. The allow keyword requires that you also provide a method that describes the nature of the access, which is going to be read or write or something more granular. This example is similar to the last one for real-time database, and it's saying that all documents in the user's collection can be read by anyone, but only an authenticated user may write the document with the ID that's the same as their own UID. The expressions themselves follow the syntax of the common expression language. While the capabilities of both rule systems are similar, in this series, I'm going to spend most of the time talking about what you can do with the common expression language used by Firestore and Cloud Storage. But before diving into that, it's a good idea to wrap your head around the strategies used to protect data. The way I see it, there are two main categories of assertions you will want to express in your rules. First, there are user-based assertions, which you can apply only if your app is also using Firebase authentication to identify and sign in the user. It's very common to use the unique ID of the user to determine which things they can read and write. You can also make use of custom claims granted to the account in order to authorize access. If you're not using Firebase Auth, you won't be able to write any rules that depend on knowing something about the user. Authentication is a crucial part of developing a secure app. And it's my opinion that you should integrate it into your app as soon as possible, even if it's just anonymous authentication, so you can also start writing good user-based rules. Second, there are content-based assertions, which you can use to control access to data based on the contents of the data itself. So for example, imagine a Boolean field value in a document that marks it as publicly readable by everyone. You can use this Boolean field value in your rules to allow access to the document. And for write operations, you can also examine the data about to be written in order to check it for validity and consistency. Ideally, you'll write rules that use a combination of these two types of assertions. Rules can get complex, but after everything is evaluated, it will boil down to a single Boolean value that either allows or rejects access. I've said a little bit about what you can do with security rules, but it's also important to understand what you can't do as well. First, you can't change the incoming data that's about to be written. While you have access to the incoming data, your rule can only allow or deny that right. You can't fix up the data in some way. If you need to do something like that, consider using Cloud Functions to trigger some code that modifies the data after the write finishes. You also can't check to see if access is coming from your app or website. Firebase products are generally intended to be accessible from anywhere there is internet access. And there are public REST APIs as well. It's just not possible to control the origin of a request using security rules. One common misunderstanding about security rules is that they don't act as query filters on your documents in Firestore. So you can't write a rule that ever changes the outcome of a query other than denying it entirely. I'll say more about this in another video. Lastly, you can't cross between products, at least not at the time of this recording. Cloud Firestore rules only have access to data in Firestore, and Cloud Storage rules only have access to object metadata. 
The only exception to this is the account information provided by Firebase Authentication for the user that was signed in prior to making the request. The security rules team is investigating the possibility of using Firestore document data in storage rules, but right now it's not possible. As I said before, security rules don't provide a full programming language, but it is still code. And like all code, you should test it while you develop to make sure it works the way you expect. It's possible to write app code that exercises your rules, but running a special code path in your app just to test rules isn't very convenient or efficient. You also don't get a very helpful error message from the client SDK in the case that an operation is denied. So to make this easier, there are two other ways to test your rules. First, it's pretty easy to get started testing rules in the Firebase console. Real-time database, Cloud Firestore, and Cloud Storage all have a rules simulator in the screen where you can edit your rules. This simulator lets you configure a database or storage operation, add authentication to it if you want, and test that situation against the rules that you see on the screen. The console will tell you which line allowed or disallowed access to the data. You can test some common rules like this, but you should know that not all situations can be simulated in the console. For testing more advanced rules, you want to download the Cloud Firestore local emulator that comes with the Firebase CLI. With the emulator, you can write code to set up some test documents, then query those documents to see if they're correctly allowed or denied by some rules. This emulator is running the exact same code that evaluates security rules deployed in production, so you'll know for sure if they work correctly. It takes some time to set up the emulator, but this is your overall best option for serious development. At the time of this recording, the Security Rules Emulator is in beta, and it's going to improve in the future. To get started with that, check the links in the description below. There's a lot to know about Firebase Security Rules, and this was just an introduction. I touched on a bunch of things today, but I'll dive into each one of them in more detail in future videos. So be sure to subscribe here to the Firebase channel on YouTube to find out when the next one is available. I'll see you then.